Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll discuss the use of static games of complete information to study population-level strategic behavior. As an example, we will study an end-player vaccination game. A common application of static games of complete information is to study very large games. We're going to call these games of many players because we allow ourselves to consider a large number of players. However, these models are typically adaptable to as few as two players as well. We say that our game has capital N players. Typically, we consider a small number of pure strategies per player, although we don't have to. Usually, the game has some sort of symmetry that makes it easier to study. We are now less interested in the behavior of individual players and more interested in the structure of the Nash equilibria. How many of each player select which pure strategy, or alternatively, the weight assigned to each pure strategy in mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. There is a rich literature studying the game theory of disease spread and the role of vaccination in its prevention. An individual's vaccination decision reduces his or her own propensity to catch the disease, but it also protects other unvaccinated individuals surrounding him or her. Later in this video, we will study this interaction by modeling it as a game. Public finance economists, in particular, use public good contribution games to study taxation. In a public good contribution game, each individual citizen simultaneously and independently chooses her private contribution towards a public good. Each citizen benefits from her own and other citizens' contributions. Each citizen pays only for her own contribution. In the next video, we will study this interaction by modeling it as a game. We could interpret vaccination as a special case of public good contribution, in which the private contribution is vaccination and the public good is herd immunity. We can also use static games of complete information to study traffic congestion. An example of such a problem appears as an old exam question. Now let's turn our attention to vaccination. I promise the use of this game in this course precedes COVID-19. We use N players to represent a population of people who meet and interact with each other, during which meetings measles can spread through the population. Each player faces a decision to vaccinate against the measles or remain unvaccinated. The vaccine is cheap, in this example, $1. Measles, on the other hand, is expensive, in this example, $400, although that is almost certainly lower than the actual cost per case. Victims lose wages, suffer through the measles, and in serious cases may require hospitalization, and the disease can even kill. In any event, these numbers are fairly pleasant to work with and capture the idea that vaccines are cheap and sickness is expensive. We'll provide some more realistic numbers later on. The good news is that the measles vaccine is incredibly effective. For our purposes, we will assume it is perfectly effective. A player who vaccinates pays a dollar for the vaccine and is sure not to catch the measles. The bad news is that measles is ridiculously contagious. The chance of getting the measles decreases as the number of vaccinated players increases. We let A denote the number of players who vaccinate and let N minus one minus A all over N minus one be the probability that an unvaccinated player gets the measles. This expression is the fraction of the population, excluding oneself, that is unvaccinated. A player who remains unvaccinated and does not become ill receives payoff zero because she does not incur the cost of the vaccine and does not incur the cost of the measles. A player who remains unvaccinated and does catch the measles receives payoff minus 400 because she does not incur the cost of the vaccine but does incur the cost of the measles. An unvaccinated player's expected payoff is therefore minus 400 times n minus 1 minus a all over n minus 1. I encourage you to pause the video to write down the matrix form of this game when n equals 2 and find all of its Nash equilibria. This exercise will help you get comfortable with this game and provide you an example of the n player case presented in the remainder of this video. We'll find the Nash equilibria of this game and use them to find the equilibrium vaccination rate. We'll also acquire some insight into why vaccination rates in the real world might drop below the Nash equilibrium level. 
When item one asks for all Nash equilibria, we need to be sure to find both pure and mixed strategy Nash equilibria of the game. We'll start with the pure strategy Nash equilibria. A pure strategy Nash equilibrium consists of A players who vaccinate and the remaining N minus A players who do not. We need to check that a player choosing V cannot profitably deviate to U, and also that a player choosing U cannot profitably deviate to V. We'll obtain upper and lower bounds on the Nash equilibrium A in terms of the number of players, N, the cost of the vaccine, 1, and the cost of the measles, 400. Let's first make sure no one choosing V can profitably switch to U. A player choosing V receives minus 1. If she had instead chosen U, the number of vaccinated players falls from A to A minus 1. So the probability of getting sick if unvaccinated is now N minus 1 minus A minus 1 all over N minus 1. We multiply that fraction by minus 400 to obtain the expected payoff of our player choosing U instead of V. A player choosing V cannot profitably deviate to U when the inequality shown is true. Here are the first two algebraic steps. Be careful to remember to flip the direction of the inequality when dividing by minus 400. A is bounded above by n minus n minus 1 over 400. If n equals 2, that is to say A is bounded above by 401 out of 400, or a little more than 1. Now let's make sure no one choosing U can profitably switch to V. A player choosing U receives minus 400 times n minus 1 minus A all over n minus 1. If she had instead chosen V, she would have received minus 1. A player choosing U cannot profitably deviate to V when the inequality shown is true. Here are the first two algebraic steps. Be careful to remember to flip the direction of the inequality when dividing by minus 400. A is bounded below by n minus 1 minus n minus 1 over 400. If n equals 2, that is to say A is bounded below by 399 out of 400, or a little less than 1. Combining these inequalities, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium consists of A players who vaccinate and the balance N minus A who do not, where A sits in the range shown. There are many pure strategy Nash equilibria in this game. We don't need to state them individually. We just need to describe the number of vaccinators in Nash equilibrium. If N equals 2, that is to say that in pure strategy Nash equilibrium, one player vaccinates while the other does not. Next, we'll find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. By symmetry, all players must play the same strategy in this Nash equilibrium. Let P denote the probability of playing V. The expected payoff of V is minus 1. The expected payoff of U requires some explanation. A player whose mixed strategy selects U incorporates the expected number of vaccinators into her expected payoff. We replace A with the expected value of A. This replacement is mathematically legal because A enters the probability of getting sick linearly, i.e. not in the denominator or through an exponent or with some power attached to it or some other weird thing. Now we've replaced E of A with N minus one times P. One way to frame the idea of a mixed strategy is to imagine dividing each player into smaller pieces according to the weight the mixed strategy associates to each peer strategy. In this vaccination game, that means each player is divided into two pieces, one of size P who vaccinates and one of size one minus P who does not. Since there are N minus one other players, the expectation of A is equal to N minus one times P, i.e. the number of players of size P who vaccinate. Cancel n minus 1 from the numerator and denominator. At this point, it is apparent that our mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is independent of the number of players. Setting the expectations equal to each other, we see that the Nash equilibrium P satisfies the following equation. P is equal to 399 out of 400, or a Nash equilibrium vaccination rate of 99.75%. 
Both the pure and mixed strategy Nash equilibria lead us to the same conclusion about the Nash equilibrium vaccination rate. The pure strategy Nash equilibrium vaccination rate is A over N. As N approaches infinity, A over N approaches 399 out of 400. We could use this model to study diseases other than measles. Intuitively, if the vaccine is cheaper or the disease is more costly, the Nash equilibrium vaccination rate should increase. On the other hand, if the vaccine is more expensive or the disease is less costly, the Nash equilibrium vaccination rate should decrease. Let C and S denote the cost of the vaccine and the sickness, respectively. Instead of folding 1 and 400 into our derivation of the pure strategy Nash equilibrium, we could hold them separate as shown in red and blue in the top line on the right. Replacing 1 and 400 with C and S in the bottom line, we see that the model bears out our intuition. A, the number of players who vaccinate in pure strategy Nash equilibrium, decreases as the ratio of C to S increases. There is also nothing special about calling the prevention measure vaccination. This game provides at least a loose framework for studying other disease prevention measures. Let's talk about COVID-19 for a moment. We could instead replace the strategies V and U with the strategies socially distance and don't socially distance. We would no doubt need to tweak everything a bit, since social distancing is a much more costly means of disease prevention than a vaccine, and the potential upside of not socially distancing is perhaps large, especially if one stands to lose wages by socially distancing. We'd need to tweak the probability of getting sick when not socially distancing, but the idea that the probability of getting sick increases as the number of social distancers decreases is at least qualitatively consistent with the best current medical advice. Our result about the relationship between the vaccination rate and the fraction C over S is even clearer when we consider the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. The vaccination rate is 1 minus C over S. As C increases or S decreases, the vaccination rate falls. As C decreases or S increases, the vaccination rate increases. The CDC reports that in 2017, 92.1% of U.S. teenagers between 13 and 17 years were fully vaccinated against measles. The CDC pays $13.75 per dose of MMRV vaccine, which includes measles. The cost of a case of measles is murkier, but $400 is almost certainly too low. These authors from the CDC report a minimum of $7,396. These numbers imply a Nash equilibrium vaccination rate of at least 99.8%. The structure of the pure strategy Nash equilibria suggests an explanation for this apparently low vaccination rate. The existence of individuals who want to be in a Nash equilibrium in which somebody else does the vaccinating and they rely on herd immunity. Thanks so much for watching this video about the use of static games of complete information to study population level strategic behavior in a vaccination game. In the next video, we'll study public good contribution and explain using game theory the tragedy of the commons.